When teachers begin to differentiate the instruction in their classrooms, it becomes apparent that not all students approach problem solving in the same way. In his writings about multiple intelligences, Howard Gardner has identified several intelligence preferences or strengths that students rely upon to take in information and solve problems. In a differentiated classroom, teachers facilitate the learning process by recognizing and accommodating these learning preferences when planning and carrying out instruction. For an example of this approach, we traveled to William Southern Elementary School in Independence, Missouri. Here, we will watch as Kimberly Ties teaches a math lesson. As you watch the lesson, see if you can identify the ways in which the teacher has provided for intelligence preferences that include logical mathematical, kinesthetic, interpersonal, and spatial. As you will see, Mrs. Ties has taken care to group students with different preferences together so that they may benefit from each other's strengths. Now let's watch as Mrs. Ties introduces her lesson. My name is Kimberly Tice. I teach third grade at William Southern Elementary in Independence, Missouri. And today we're doing a couple of differentiated lessons for you. Uh, for me, differentiated is teaching and helping every child feel successful. If every child doesn't feel successful, then they're not learning very well. So today we're doing two activities. The first one is a math contest. And the children have been very carefully grouped. So we have a high reader, comprehender in each group. We have a child who can solve math problems very carefully in each group. And some of the groups have a child who would need support in math or reading. And that helps them feel very successful. There is a competitive edge to this math contest, which your high children really like. So that gets them more involved and feel successful. So it's a group effort. It's also cooperative learning. After they finish it, it's, uh, some groups will finish very quickly because it's they're good at problem solving. After they finish, they will be going into a differentiated learning activity where there's a choice board, they're working on a very big all about me project and there's a lot of tiered activities they can choose from, starting with basic activities that maybe your average kids would choose, moving on up into some activities that would require some research and some extensive writing that the more motivated children will choose to do. So I think you'll see some great differentiated instruction going on today. And yeah, you know what? Just go sit in that brown chair there. Thank you. That'll be good. All right. Today, we are getting ready to continue our math contest, which I know you have really enjoyed. And before we get started, let's look up at our agenda here. We are right now going to talk about strategies. We graded yesterday's math contest already this morning. And I know that gave you a lot of things to think about, like, boy, what could I do differently? What could I change today? How could my team do better? So I put up some discussion questions, and I, we talked about these earlier. So I'd just like some of your input. So what is working well in your math groups right now? What do you think has gone well for you and your team? Jeffrey? Um, using VAS or calculator. And that does help to have someone who can quickly think of a strategy, right? Yeah. He thinks of it, and sometimes he guesses, and then we use the calculator real quick, and he normally gets it right. Oh, I just heard two strategies there. Sometimes somebody will make a common sense guess, and then they'll back it up with the calculator. Good job. That's a great way to get it right. Michaela? Well, and sometimes in our group, um, we, use, we do, like, everybody tries to work it out, and then we all make sure we have the right answer, and if we don't, then we always check it over again. Good. Double-checking each other. Good job. I hear some really good things here. Now, what about number two, though? What is not working so well? Anything you've noticed? And maybe, maybe everything's working great, but is there anything you feel like maybe it's not working out so well? Nathan. Um, one thing that's not working well in our groups is that we're all kind of yelling at each other, like, that's not the right answer, but, yeah. Oh, so maybe being a little critical about yeah. you didn't do it right. Okay, so working on not being so critical, because I told you there's problems on here that a typical third grader is not going to be able to do, right? 
That's why it's a contest, because there are going to be some that are my, probably too hard for us, and we just have to do the best we can do. All right. We kind of covered number three, like what Randy said. Have you figured out how each person in the group can help the group? How's that working for you and your group? Brooklyn? You're, everyone's helping? And you're doing, I noticed, yeah. Everyone's doing well. Everyone's trying to put effort into it. That's, that's good. Let's look at number five. <coughs> what math materials have been most helpful to you? What math materials are the most helpful to you right now? Ashley? Calculators. How's that helping you? Because you can type in the numbers. Yes, those are nice, aren't they? And like I said, don't get calculator crazy, though, because if you don't know how, what you're typing in, then what's the other strategy we should use if you're not sure what you're doing? What's that other strategy we should use, Tristan? Paper. Paper, pencil, draw it out, because that's always with you. Or Drawing it out in your job. brain, helping you picture that strategy. Good job. Any other math materials? Ryan? Uh, my brain. Your brain. <laughs> I would hope so. Did we all bring our brains today? Yeah. yeah. Good, because it's the day before spring break and I was kind of afraid someone would forget. Good job. Okay. Uh, number six. Now, after grading yesterday's math, what are you planning to do differently? Is there anything you said, eh, not working for me? What could we do a little bit differently? Ben? Oh. We're going to try to use paper and pencil more instead of uh, trying to use the calculator unless we get stumped on this question. Okay, because sometimes that paper and pencil will just help you see the answer, right? Drawing it out is a great way to visualize. Jeffrey? Our team is going to start trying to use our heads instead of just the calculator. Good idea. And, and I've said, that's so important, before I use the calculator, I use my common sense, and I think, would this answer be in the hundreds? Would this answer be in the tens? How, you know, how big or how small? Because if you get something crazy on the calculator, your common sense should kick in and go, mm, I don't think we did this right, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to go straight to our con contest. If you finish early, and I know some of you will, I need your test back because it is a contest. If you want to get your points, you have to give it back to me. And then we're right on to special project time. The power of me, your special project. You're going to look at what your choices were yesterday. If you're continuing one of those projects, you're going to pull that out and stay with it. If you're starting a new project, remember where your resources are that you might need. Are we ready? Yeah. OK. Good luck. Go. On your desk. All your tests are on your desk. Please don't forget your team's names. Very, very important. This scoreboard shows how many runs were scored in each inning of a softball game. The team with the most runs won the game. Who won? The Burrows or the Panthers? Let's see. Okay. Pandas won that first game. Pandas. Pandas. Burrows. 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 And then Ty. Ty. Okay. Let's see. Count up all the. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 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 So burr. Burr. You want to write it, Katrina? One weighs nine three kilograms, and the other weighed ninety eight kilograms. What was the total weight of the scale? She's good at math. I'm good at reading. That's a good team for this assignment, isn't it? 24 scouts went on a camp out. Three scouts slept in each tent. How many tents did they use?
Don't forget that drawing strategy. Draw what you know. Oh, I think I know it. Draw what you know. Summary two. If they is if there is three in each tent and there is twenty four, it would be less than twenty four. I don't get it. She's using her common sense. She says if, if there was three in each tent, it would be less than twenty four. <laughs> I think it's 21 tenths. I'm guessing. What do you know? That's 24 tenths and three scouts in each tent. So there were 24 tenths. Oh. How'd you make sure figure that out? I had 24 in my head and I kind of down each time and I have one on my chair. Okay, let's see what he does. And you did it in your head. Nice so, the mental math and the drawing, you backed each other up. So how many tenths? Eight. Eight. You know, you're right, Nathan. You, you guys do make a good team. Mr. Reed operates a machine in a factory. He is paid $12 per hour. He worked eight hours on Friday. How much money did he earn on Friday? Okay, add that. Eight times 12. Wait. No, eight times twelve. Eight times twelve. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. Brianna bought four fish for her saltwater aquarium. Each fish cost six twenty. How much did she, sh she pay for all four fish? Six twenty, six forty, plus twelve is twenty-four, and then twenty, 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 twenty. Twenty-four dollars and eighty cents. Twenty-four dollars and eighty cents. Twenty-four. Period. The scientist weighed two sea turtles. One weighed one hundred and three kilograms. The other weighed three ninety-eight kilograms. What what was the total weight of the two sea turtles? Okay, um uh, two hundred and one. Green double check. Yes. Okay. Okay. One zero three plus nine eight equals she's right. Two oh one. All right. Now, what are you working on with your project? Your graph. What are you graphing? Your family. All right. Get it out. Let's get started. What are you thinking, guys? Ideas. Colin. I can't figure it out because he's saying. He's saying, I, I think he, I don't understand what Van's saying. I think he's saying that one and a half plus one and a half would be two, but it's three. One and a half plus one and a half is? One hole. Three holes. One hole. Three holes. One hole. Three. Prove it. Draw it. Somebody figure it out. Oh. Three holes. Three holes. Three holes. He's right. See? There's a half. There's a half. 
half and one a half, half. make a whole, whole. whole. So what's one and a half and one and a half? One and no, a that's, half. You're, you're thinking half that's and a half. That's two. This says one and a half. Oh. oh. Half. Oh, I see where we're confused. He was thinking it said half, half. instead of one and a half. Get it? Uh huh. Good. You're right first. Hannah wants to buy a pair of binoculars for that cost forty dollars. She only has twenty five dollars. How much more money does she need? Forty minus uh, twenty one. Twenty five. Forty minus twenty five. Negative twenty five. So that's what I'm saying. That's the one. Then it would be ten. Okay. It would be ten. Yeah, that's negative. Doing okay? Yeah, we're just yeah, okay. Yeah, she can't breathe. Sorry. Breathe, breathe. He's turning into somebody that's a math teacher. I told you she'd be a math teacher in high school when she grows up. Delaney, that might be your calling, huh? No. I know it's the guy. Here. Don't you throw the left? Sorry. I keep running around. Did that help? Uh -huh. Did this help? Uh-huh. It did? Yeah, you yes. skipped down the... Um, it's naked up there. What? It's naked up Because we, because the lowest one was 12, but like about, like right here, so then we skipped down 11. I am proud of you guys for thinking of another math resource. You'll have to tell, I mean, you're the only ones that asked for a thermometer. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Okay, you got your project ready? Okay. You're working on a family tree, a family tree. Not me, I'm going to do, I'm working on a project. Ah, great. That'll be nice. Okay. And look how much. I was a little worried because you know you didn't have your full team today. And you guys just. You guys rocked. Oh, I know. You're just like that. So, everybody, how much work you guys did. I'm going to make sure you're not. I'm going to make sure you're not. Oh, that was a hard one. Are these just the people you like? No. Really? Mainly, yes. Or is it everyone in your family? You put your sister in there, didn't you? Good. Okay. My brother. You got your key. You got your title. This is nicely done. All on your own? Okay, but Ants is A U N. Not A U. That would be A nuts. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you finished one of your projects. Yes. Wow, Delaney, she's, um, I think she's found her gift. <laughs> I have not seen her step up to bat before. She's kind of, she's what you call a follower. She's a little bit lazy with her work. But you saw in there, she just, she was incredible trying to, she was really wanting to solve these problems mentally. And I found that kind of interesting because she was, you know, kind of showing off and she found that she could do something that she didn't know she could do before. And so that was really cool. Her and uh, Nathan working together. And Nathan said it, he said, I, I'm the reader and, and I never told them that I grouped them that way. I never, you know, told them they were grouped. I just picked their groups. But, you saw how he said, I'm good at reading, she's good at the problem solving. So they had figured that out and they were using each other to help. So that was so great. I don't know, I saw a spark in her in there that I had not seen before. I thought it went excellent, um, especially with the groups, the way they, that I built them. They worked so well together and for me, like I said earlier, differentiated learning is about students feeling successful, every student, and that's the only way every student can learn. And you could see the children were all feeling successful because they were able to help each other out, give strategies, every child was involved, and they, they loved what they were doing because problem solving can be scary for a third grader. You throw them into a problem, they don't know what strategy to use, they kind of freak out, freeze, 
and this way math is fun for them and problem solving doesn't seem so daunting to them. And then the second activity, I know you didn't get to see a lot of, but that is all about choices and what their interests are. They have to earn 100 points and they have about 20, 30 different projects they can choose from. It's tiered learning, it's tiered projects. The 10 point activities are a little lower level, they require less work and that way your students who maybe aren't as motivated to really go out there and research something can get it done a little quicker and again they feel successful. They're doing what the other kids are doing but they've made choices that they feel comfortable with. And then the 20 point, 30 point activities, the children who really like to do more research, they like to read a book and write a report or maybe even perform a play for the class which takes a lot of work. They write it, the script, they practice it and do it with one of their classmates. So you've got all the multiples, multiple intelligences and interests going on just a lot more, more choices and that's what differentiated learning is, is trying to fit every child no matter how they are, how they learn or what their interests are to get them excited about learning.